Welcome to this video on the concept of a statistic and the sampling distribution of a statistic. Now let's start off with what a statistic is. So any characteristic of a population which is measurable is called a population parameter. A parameter is a numerical property of a sample for example, the mean and population variance are population parameters. Now, usually if the population is too large to calculate these parameters, we can estimate the population parameter by taking a random sample of the population and using observations from the items um, to estimate the required parameters. So, for example, we could use the sample mean as an estimate for the population mean. So, a statistic is a quantity calculated only from the observations of, in a sample. And it does not involve any unknown parameters. Therefore, a statistic is a numerical property of a sample. So, just to confirm, a statistic is calculated only from the observations in a sample and it does not have any unknown parameters. Now the second thing we're looking at is a sampling distribution of a statistic. So if we take or repeatedly take samples from a population and calculate the same statistic each time, there's a range of values that the statistic can take and this is obvious because you know if you've got a large population you take samples you're never gonna have exactly the same sample now just getting back to it so the statistic will have its own distribution and this is called the sampling distribution so in short you know we take many samples of a population calculate the same type of statistic each time and that will have its own distribution, which is called the sampling distribution. Now, the way we write this down will become very familiar with you. And I'll show you when we get into um, well, a couple of examples. But the second example will be where we look at the sampling distribution. So let's get on to the first example, simply about the statistic or the concept of a statistic. So part A here is define a statistic. We have already done that. It is simply a quantity calculated only from the observations in a sample. Now, part B asks, for each of the following state whether or not it is a statistic. So let's look at the first one. The first one is essentially a mean, isn't it? X2 plus, sorry, X3 plus X5 plus X9 over three. Now those x are, as we can see up here, a random sample taken from that, isn't it? So this is going to be a statistic. Looking at the second one, well this is looks like the variance. And the variance is taken from here, so it will also be a statistic. Now when I look at the way this one's written, we do have a little bit of a problem. This mean here is unknown. It's an unknown mean. It tells me in the question with an unknown mean. If we don't know it, it cannot be a statistic, can it? Because that was one of the definitions of it. Now, in the second example, a manufacturer of light bulbs sells 6 and 7.5 watt LED light bulbs. And it sells them in the ratio of 3 to 1. Find the mean and variance of the wattage of the light bulbs in this population. So first, let's think about what's happening. So we use X and we have 6 watt light bulbs and 7.5 watt light bulbs. They sell them in the ratio of 3 to 1, which means that has a probability that's three quarters and one quarter. 
Now finding the mean, which is, you know, my expected value, that's just going to be six times three quarters plus 7.5 times one quarter. And that gives me 6.375, or I could have left as this 51 over 8. And then the variance, now if you remember that, that would be the probability times x squared, wasn't it? And the sum of that. So we've got 6 squared times 3 quarters plus 7.5 squared times 1 quarter quarter and then I need to take away the mean squared now this gives me 41.0625 minus my 6.375 squared so that's 27 over 64 or 0 0.422 to three significant figures there now, a random sample of three light bulbs is taken from a store containing bulbs in this ratio, so still in the ratio three to one. I list all the possible samples. So if we take in three, we could have taken three lots of six. We could have taken a six, a six, and a 7.5. And of course there's three different variations of the way that that could have happened. We could have taken a six and two 7.5 light bulbs. And again, there are three different variations in which, or combinations in which that could happen. And then finally, there could be three 7.5s. So here we have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different possible samples. And that's what's going to help me with my probabilities. So here we have find the sampling distribution of the mean of x. So I want to look at these, each of these, and find the mean. So if I think of this first one, 6 plus 6 plus 6 divided by 3, it's going to have a mean of... 6 isn't it? My second 3 here, we got two 6s and a 7.5. That gives me a mean of 9.75. Then we have a mean of 10.5 and finally a mean of 7.5. Apologies, I realised straight away I made a mistake here. It should be a mean of 7. Just divided by two instead of three, like an idiot. So those are all my means. Okay, now what I can do is work out the probability of getting that mean. So if I think of the first one, the probability that the mean is equal to six is the probability of getting three six watt light bulbs. So that is three quarters times by three quarters times by three quarters. So in this case, 27 over 64. Now the next mean size up is my nine point. Sorry, I just realized silly mistake there. Clearly not 9.75 because, you know, it's the second largest one or the second smallest one I should say not the second largest so that was really stupid of me there but good job I noticed so 6.5 is what we should have here and for this I've got two sixes and one 7.5 so that means three quarters squared times one quarter and I have three of them so I'm going to times that by 3. And funny enough, this is still 27 over 64. How weird. Now, my next one is when our mean is equal to 7. And we've got two 7.5s. 
and one sixth. So we want one three quarters, two quarters, and again, there's three different versions of that. And that's going to give me nine over 64. And then finally, when my mean is 7.5, that's one quarter cubed. There's only one way of making that. Therefore, it's going to be 1 over 64 in the end. Now, you should then also just double check. These should all total what your bottom is, the 64. So 227s are 54, 63, 64. There we are. So 64 over 64, so it's a total of 1. Now, that's my working out. What I should then do is put this as a distribution, so in a table. And here we have our distribution of mean. So it's as a table with my x values, which actually should be an x with a bar above it, and the probabilities there. Notice the probabilities, or remember the probabilities should have still always total 1. Now, for part D, we want to find the sampling distribution of the mode. So, quite straightforward. The mode of my first three numbers has got to be 6, isn't it? My mode here is also 6. This mode is 7.5. And this mode is also 7.5. So I've only got two possible values for the mode, 6 or 7.5. Now, I already know that the probability of this one happening is 27 over 64, as is this one. This one was 9 over 64 and 1 over 64. So that's what I'm going to use for my values of my mode. So the probability that the mode is equal to 6 is going to be 27 over 64 plus 27 over 64, which is 27 over 32. And the probability that the mode is 7.5 is 9 over 64 plus 1 over 64 which is 10 over 64 or 5 over 32. These two total 32 over 32 or 1. So we know we are good there. Now I want to find or write this as a distribution. So again, I'm going to put it as a table. And there we are, complete. This final two steps, so part C, part D, this is where people tend to go wrong. So just have a careful look at this before trying a few of the questions yourself. And as I always say, you know, the answers will be at the end of the video. And if you found it useful, please hit the like, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and consider hitting the bell icon to let you know when the next video comes online.